As a Russian writer who writes very long books, uh, his name is Dostoevsky, but he writes very funny, but his books sound are really depressing. So the, the titles are Crime and Punishment, or uh, you know, Brothers Karamazov, or The Possessed, or you know, The Idiot. These are the titles of his books. And when you read these long things, you, you feel like you're about to enter a dark cloud of just gloom and just sadness. And you do, but they're very funny. Because the man is a, he's a very funny writer, he's insightful. But he has this one great line. And he says, we cannot be saved if we are not honest with ourselves. We cannot be saved if we cannot be honest with ourselves. And thank God for laughter and humor. For not for laughter and humor, it would be very difficult to be honest with ourselves. But because that we have this ability to laugh and find the strength somehow to not take ourselves all too seriously, we are able to create the room and the space enough to look at ourselves and to be honest with ourselves. Laughter can be very holy and can be the very thing that God uses to help us see ourselves the way God wants us to be seen. Laughter can be the very thing that God uses to put to it. Laughter will be the taxi by which truth drives us sometimes. And thank God for humor and laughter because that allows us then to hear the voice of God and the voice of truth revealed to us situations, revealed to us ourselves in a way we otherwise would not want to be revealed. Some of the best things about stand-up comics and comedy shows is you realize, my goodness, we do some funny things. We do some funny habits. All right? And it allows us to take this step back. This passage that we read with Sarah and Abraham is one very funny passage. It may not sound funny to you all in the first time you read it, but it's absolutely funny. But it also is a passage that speaks about the power of owning our laughter, but also owning ourselves in honesty as what humility requires of us. And so here we go. Let's see if we can go through it one more time. I know it's hot, and this is why this is a good passage. Abraham is out in the tent, sitting at the foot of the tent while his wife Sarah is in the tent. And the passage tells us that it's one of these heat wave kind of days. So it's hot. They're fanning themselves. The AC is not blowing any cool air. It's just blowing air. They're trying to find the circulation. It's not working. They're hot. So Abraham is just sitting at the tent, essentially bored and wasting away. And then these three strangers come by. And Abraham immediately, maybe out of boredom with his wife, no longer wanting to sit and talk to her, runs to these strangers to greet them in hospitality. And he is very hospitable to them. And when he greets these strangers, he sits them under the shade of the tree. He tells his wife to go bake a cake. So his wife is in the tent, and Abraham is outside entertaining and hosting these strangers. Now, you don't see Sarah because she's inside the tent, and Abraham is outside the tent having a conversation. And the conversation eventually turns to, where is your wife? He says, she's in the tent. And then the conversation goes and says, one of them. And now the strangers begin to reveal that they're not just strangers. The strangers will begin to reveal that they are the Lord. One of the things that Genesis does is it shows us that oftentimes we may not know when the Lord approaches us or speaks to us or is engaging us. Sometimes it may seem like strangers, but at a certain point it comes to reveal that that is the Lord speaking to you right now. So even the people you may meet, or you may not wonder why you met them, the Lord may be using just them to speak to you. This is what Genesis does. So now all of a sudden we have to flip, and now the strangers become to be revealed as the Lord. And he says, where is your wife? And then he says, I will return to you in due season, and your wife will have a son. Now Sarah is eavesdropping on this conversation. So though she is sitting in the tent, she's sitting right by the door, and she's listening in. All right? And as she's listening in, she, sees, she hears, I'm going to have a son. And what does Sarah do? Because they are of old age and veteran members of AARP, <laughs> Sarah laughs. She laughs and says to herself, <laughs> I am no 
spring chicken. I have been young for quite some time. I'm going to have this pleasure. I'm going to have this child. And she laughs out loud, and she couldn't help it. She laughs. She's in the tank. So as Abraham's having this conversation with the Lord, out of nowhere you hear, ha, 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 from the darkness of the tank. Then all of a sudden, the Lord said to Abraham, why did your wife laugh? Shot and say, shall I be bad child now that I'm old? So he not only heard her laugh, but he heard her. There's nothing more embarrassing than eavesdropping and getting caught. There's nothing more embarrassing than when you find yourself sneaking and looking through a book in secret and looking up and finding out that someone is looking at what you are doing. Oh my. So now she's caught and she's laughing. And the Lord asks, why does Sarah laugh? And say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that time, I will return to you, and she shall have a son. But out of nowhere, from behind the tent, so you still don't see Sarah, she doesn't come out the tent, she speaks from the tent, she says, I did not laugh. <laughs> so the men are outside, and then you hear this voice out of nowhere saying, I did not laugh. It's kind of like the Wizard of Oz, right? And she, but she was afraid. And he said, speaking to the tent, Oh yes, you did laugh. And thus ends our passage. Sometimes people view this as Sarah's doubt. And the sin of Sarah, let's just say her sin, so to speak, her mistake, is that she doubted. She laughed because she doubted. And therefore, Sarah, that's, that's Sarah's moment. Well, Abraham is you know, a man of faith. He never doubts. The thing. That is not the issue. The issue was that Sarah, if she had a mistake or a sin, it was not that she laughed, but it was that she could not own the fact that she laughed. She couldn't own it. She wasn't honest with herself and her experience. And that is where she failed in humility. She got afraid and she couldn't own that what God was going to do was surprising, was maybe absurd, was amazing, and was actually kind of funny. And yet it was still what the Lord was going to do. And there are times, and this is the message for us, God will do things in your life that are surprising, that may seem ridiculous, and that may make you laugh. And just because you laugh doesn't mean that you doubt. It doesn't mean that you're a sinner. It just means that you have the right response. Because sometimes the Lord does some amazing, amazing, and funny, surprising stuff in our lives. And for us to laugh and say, I did laugh because it seems funny to me that you would use me at this time, in this place, in that way. I just, I don't know what other reaction to have. Sometimes your laughter is the best amen you can give to the Lord. But if you are not able to be honest about the laughter, then you slip into a sin. How can you be saved if you aren't honest with yourself? She laughed, and yet that was fine. And she needed to own her experience and own her reaction. She needed to own it because this was what God was going to do in her life. Humility is not about feeling sorry for ourselves or beating ourselves up or saying how low we are. Humility is about honesty. Being honest with who you are your situation, your reactions, your struggles, so that you can then relate to God. Humor and humility have the same root word. It's the same. They're connected. Which means this ability to take a step away from yourself and look at yourself and be honest with yourself. That is what, will be, what you need to have 